Hey guys, Mike for Sim Racing 604 and say hello for the first time on this channel to the GT2 pack for Assetto Corsa Competizione. This is just the third non-cup series to be included in this title alongside GT4 and of course it's Central Series GT3. Kunos did get leaked for their GT2 plans back in 2022, but they have finally released these six cars as DLC. For those not familiar with the latest iteration of GT2, which is not to be confused with the Group GT2 cars, which preceded LMGTE, this new GT2 class is a more powerful but less aerodynamically refined GT car when compared with GT3. The makes and many of the models should be familiar, but the cars are, of course, homologated and BOP'd to remain competitive. The series, unfortunately, hasn't exactly taken the world by storm, and in fact, the 2023 SRO GT2 European series, which this DLC is based on, often had just 10 or 11 race entries. But the cars themselves are exciting, and often the most powerful customer race cars offered by their respective manufacturers. Speeds can climb north of 300 kilometers per hour, and with less refined aero, these GT2s will keep you on your toes in the corners. Even though the real series is struggling for entries, the racing potential remains strong. The 2023 European Championship was decided by just one point with a tie for third. That's super impressive. ACC and SRO both supplement the series with competitive cars like the Lamborghini Huracan Super Trofeo Evo 2 and the Ferrari 488 Challenge Evo. Will these cars go the way of the GT4s and ACC and become rare in online races but huge fun in single player? Time will tell for the first part of that question, but let's get to know the cars a bit more and do some testing to try and answer the second part. I'm going to be test driving these cars in roughly the order I prefer them, from least favorite to favorite, so let's get into it. So the first car to look at is the Porsche 935. This is the 2019 edition. If you know your motorsport history, you probably know the ancestor of this car, the Porsche 93578. It's known to many of us simply as Moby Dick and it competed at Le Mans in the late 1970s. That car was about 750 horsepower and had a massive turbo which made it really unruly. It has that long and sleek design with that tapered rear end. Uh, this modern car is based on the Porsche 911 GT2 RS, the 991.2 version. It has Porsche's familiar six-cylinder twin-turbo rear-mounted boxer engine and this engine, this new iteration of the 935, uh, is capable of producing around 700 horsepower. The dry weight is close to 14 100 kilograms but don't put too much stock into the numbers because uh, because of BOP and homologation these figures will be adjusted this 935 to be clear is not a true GT2 car but it is allowed to race in the GT2 series as a non homologated car again to help fill out the series which is struggling for entries so let's go ahead and drive the Porsche 935 so here we are at Silverstone in the 935 and just gonna do a couple lap race here. And the reason this falls at the bottom spot of the six new cars we have, well, you're kind of seeing it now. It just does not handle high speed corners <laughs> at all well. It, uh, it feels bouncy by nature, especially compared to the rest of these cars. Whereas the rest of the cars are low, slick race cars. This 935 just seems to sit up really high and just make you earn every corner. Now, is it, you know, bad to drive? Is it, you know, troublesome? No, it, it, it's it's interesting, it's it's kind of fun in its own way, uh, but next to the rest of the GT2 cars, unfortunately this one falls at the bottom of my list, and even to break it there, you probably saw a little bit of wiggle in the steering wheel. Um, just everything you do in this car is that much more difficult than, uh, than the cars you're competing against. It is very fast in a straight line, so it feels almost like like a prototype or like a Le Mans prototype or something, um, which, you know, knowing the 935, if you look back at its history, you kind of put two and two together. But, yeah, just as a GT2 car, do I love it? No. <laughs> it's uh, so bouncy and uh, just kind of floats along the track. And uh, again, just doesn't really give me whoa, much to go on. So I have a tough time. <laughs> wrestling this thing as you're seeing and uh, you just end up doing silly stuff like that and just uh, come on wow 
and uh, yeah, it's just all around a difficult car to drive. Um, that last section, that is not typical. I mean, I can certainly run consecutive laps here safely in the 935, but certainly among the six GT2 cars we have, this is the one which is most prone to those moments of slip, and uh, yeah, it's just, man. Uh, you just don't connect with it the way you do uh, some of the other GT2 cars. But let's see if we can put together a clean lap here, shall we? Safely around the first corner, that's good. Now through Baggett's and Beckett's, we will give back some time, but then in the subsequent straight, we should be able to make up a little bit of that time. See how mightily it handles corners. That is true of all these GT2 cars. It could just glide right over everything, and it feels more pronounced, more obvious, more easy in this 935 than perhaps some of the other GT2s, um, which is an advantage, of course. But uh, again, just hard to feel connected to this car. It just kind of glides along the surface and uh, feels bouncy, so... Sadly, the car I was most looking forward to driving, I just cannot click with. Maybe it's me, maybe it's a bad setup, I don't know. But this one just feels like it doesn't even belong in these GT2s. And I know it's not a true GT2, I get it. But, uh, you know, running alongside the other cars we have in this GT2 pack, and you know, as we sort of ascend the ladder of favorites, you'll kind of see that the stability increases. And uh, it peaks at a weird point, and it won't be the top of the list, but uh, we'll get to that in a, in a moment. Uh, but yeah, definitely at the bottom of my list, the car that's giving me the most trouble, the car I feel least connected to, this 935. So we are on a decent pace here. And if you have a look at that speed, you see it climbs. We should get up near 260 on this little straight here. 250 actually was the highest I saw. So good speed, definitely good straight line speed. And uh, it does well at Monza, I would say, that's where it's at its best. But uh, yeah, even Silverstone, which is, you know, it, which does have a lot of flat out sections. This just ain't it, for me at least. But uh, yeah, that's kind of it. All right, next. So the next car on the list is the Mercedes AMG GT2. This is a tried and true formula for Mercedes down to the naming convention. Their GT4 car is just the Mercedes AMG GT4. And we know of course the AMG GT3. Uh, but this one is using a different engine than you might be used to. So we're used to that big screaming uh, 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 engine in the GT3. This one actually uses a four liter bi-turbo V8 engine uh, adapted from the Mercedes AMG GT track series. So it produces over 700 horsepower, which is among the most powerful in the GT2 field. It's also among the heaviest cars, uh, weighing over 1,400 kilograms. Again, don't pay too much attention to the exact figures because those will be adjusted to keep the cars competitive, but broadly, it's the most powerful and heaviest. It's technically a mid-engine car, but the engine is in front of the driver, and uh, this is the most powerful customer race car offered by Mercedes, which is saying a lot. Interestingly, the steering wheel you'll see in this Mercedes AMG GT2 was developed with the folks at Cube Controls. Yes, sim racing bleeding into real world racing. I think that's pretty cool. Let's test drive the Mercedes. So we're now moving to the true GT2 cars and this Mercedes, yeah, it's, uh, I want to love it. I love the Assetto Corsa. Uh, Mercedes Evo by Race Sim Studio. That I think is, you know, one of the best cars ever produced in sim racing. This one, the GT2. Uh, I mean, it's it's something. It's it's miles better than the 935. Of course, this is a true GT2. But uh, is it great? No. It, it feels heavy. It feels, you know, like it kind of plods along on the track. It's not nimble. Um, you know, it's what, 400 kilograms heavier than the car we're seeing in front of us now, that KTM is a very light, very capable, agile car. Uh, again, this one just kind of feels heavy. It's powerful, believe me. 700 horsepower coming from that V8 engine up front. 
But, uh, yeah, again, it just kind of feels awkward on the track. It's, uh, miles better. It doesn't feel floaty like the 935. At the same time, it's, it's just hard to love. It just kind of is, you know, the worst characteristics of the GT3 version in ACC. Uh, of the Mercedes-AMG GT3, that is. Um, and yeah, it, it's... It's decent. I, I could race with it if I had to, but uh, compared to the rest of the field, this one kind of sits lower on my list. Um, it's another one I wanted to love, uh, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, I'm just not connecting with it. And we have another AMG GT2 up front in front of us. Let's see if we can catch up to it. But uh, yeah, broadly speaking, I would put this comfortably second lowest on my list. It's uh, the last of the cars that I don't really feel connected to. This one just kind of lumbers around the track, like I said, and just kind of feels heavy. And, uh, you know, the, the Evo version of the GT3 is so nimble. And uh, it does things front-engine, rear-wheel drive. I know it's technically a mid-engine, I get it. But, uh, you know, with the engine in front of the driver, let's say that, it does things that cars in that configuration shouldn't be able to do. <laughs> it feels tremendous that way. And uh, this GT2 gets none of that. <laughs> it just feels heavy and uh, cumbersome on the track, let's say. Oh, see what I mean? Missed that, and then I had to slam on the brakes. Thankfully, it has very, very good brakes. But uh, yeah, this one, again, the last of the ones that I'm not really connecting with. So we're going to get into a little bit more fun and positivity after this. Soon, as we cross this start-finish line, we'll go on to number four on my list. Alright, let's go there now. Next up is the Maserati GT2. That is the name. It might be known to some as the Maserati MC20 GT2, but if you look on the website, it's officially just the Maserati GT2. It takes significant style and design cues from the Ferrari 296 GT3. You might see that right away. It has that very familiar exhaust, those twin exhaust tips coming out of the middle of the back of the car. It has a three liter twin turbo V6 engine uh, behind the driver. Uh, you can see that massive snorkel on the roof of the car sucking air back to that mid-mounted engine. Uh, it's rated at about 620 horsepower, so it comes in kind of mid-pack here in terms of power, uh, likely around 1,350 kilograms dry. Um, I believe this is one of the best looking cars in the GT2 field, and you'll see, or you'll here rather when we get this on track it's among the best sounding as well so this is probably the uh, car that's going to grab the most attention in this GT2 pack for ACC so let's drive so the Maserati is a good all-around car and I can see this being some people's favorites it's the best sounding of the lot for sure um, I think it not only draws heavy inspiration from the 296 Ferrari in terms of its styling, uh, but very much if you're a fan of the 296 GT3 in a set of Corsa Competizione, I would probably say that you would be a fan of this car. It's very similar in handling, uh, perhaps unsurprisingly. And uh, yeah, again, if you get on with that car, this might be a good place to start. For me, it's nice and light, it's agile, it's fun to drive. Um, it gets beat out in a few categories. We'll get into that when we get into uh, driving the remaining three cars. Um, but again, a very good all around car. And uh, I think that uh, this is going to be a favorite among some people. Like I said, it's, uh, it's a good overall car, the best sounding, great styling. And uh, we don't have a lot of Maseratis in racing, period. Of course, you got that incredible sounding GT4 car. But uh, yeah, nice return here in the GT2 class. So they just call it the Maserati GT2. I believe it's the MC20. So uh, interesting naming convention uh, that Kunos has taken with this. Not sure uh, who was driving that, but uh, I see it in the menu just as the MC, uh, excuse me, as the Maserati uh, GT2. But yeah, great handling car. Obviously, uh, heavily inspired by the 296. Drives as such. You can see it gets a good launch here. 
doesn't have the straight line speed of the 935, that's for certain. But uh, fast enough that it, you're not going to get blown away on the straights. Whoa, this is going to be tight. Yeah, really fun. And this is one of the ones I would say any of the top four would probably make you appreciate what Kunos has done with these GT2s. Uh, they're, you know, more unruly in the corners than you're used to with GT3s. So you have to put a little more mental effort into driving them. You probably can fall asleep driving a GT3 these days if you've been driving ACC since, what was it, released in 2018. So we're going on six years of driving GT3s in uh, ACC. Um, so if that's you, if you're, you know, doing it in your sleep and jump over to these GT2s, this is among, this Maserati is among the cars that will make you think, you know what, this is something a little bit different, not drastically different, but something a little bit uh, more alive in the corners, perhaps, maybe a little bit faster in the straight line, and just overall fun machine. So yeah, Maserati uh, separating itself, getting up into my, uh, whoops, that's not the end. I don't need to do my wind down speech. <laughs> Show us how much I drive Indianapolis. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's in my top four for sure, belongs there. Really fun car. Gets edged out by a couple just elite GT2 cars that are massive fun. So uh, there, now we can wrap it. <laughs> I promise I'm done now. All right, let's go uh, into the top three. Moving now to the KTM Crossbow GT2. We have seen some cars in this pack that are very familiar and we see the GT2 Crossbow that is very obscure, shall we call it? We do have a GT4 Crossbow, but no GT3 entry, interestingly. Um, this is the fastest and most powerful car KTM offers. It has an Audi engine in it, a 2.5 liter turbo inline five, yes, five cylinder engine just to keep things weird. Uh, that engine is capable of producing up to 600 horsepower, but uh, interestingly, that's probably dialed down. Even though it's the lowest figure in the field, uh, because of BOP rules and the car weighing less than 1,100 kilograms, they've likely dialed that engine down somewhat. The trademark of this car, of course, is that clamshell, which opens the cockpit from the top instead of standard doors, uh, but KTM has, in the real world, uh, developed windows that open finally. So this is the KTM Crossbow. It's a very strange thing, but ranks quite high on my list, so let's drive it. So cracking my top three is a car, it's like the inverse of the 935 and the Mercedes. It's like the car I didn't think I would like. <laughs> I actually really, really enjoy it. KTM is like, it's the weird one. It's got no dash mounted display. It's all on the wheel, the five cylinder engine, you know, the strange clamshell instead of doors. There's a lot going on here. It's underpowered, but it's very light and you know, by dint of it being very light, it is the most GT3 feeling of these GT2 cars. It's extremely agile. It feels glued to the road by comparison to uh, any of these cars that I have found thus far. And uh, yeah, it just makes a really, really uh, fun driving experience. And again, uh, if your frame of reference for ACC is GT3, and it probably is, um, then this is a great starting point. It feels so GT3. Again, very underpowered. I think it's, I think it's the smallest uh, output of any of the cars included in this pack. But the handling is just tremendous. This thing is just glued to the ground. So you get to do a lot more with it than you do with the other GT2s. So uh, maybe that's something you're seeking out. Maybe you're not. Uh, but again, <laughs> you can see that Mercedes pulling away, but watch what happens. He's got to tap his brakes. I can get around there so easily and then kill him under braking because I'm so light. Woo! That was not what I planned to do. So don't kill him under braking is, is the message there. Not sure how we got through there unscathed. I'm keeping that in the video for sure. Uh, but the general point is uh, this thing just can do can do things that uh, these other GT2s can't. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. You can keep up with that Mercedes. No, you can't. But we'll get him into turn one. So it's just a really, really fun experience. It definitely belongs in my top three. Um, 
Yeah, again, it's it's different in so many ways. The lower output, strange styling of this car, and uh, yeah, it's it's considerably lighter. I think it's like one thousand. I can't remember the exact weight, but uh, you know, under eleven 1 hundred kilograms. When some of them are nearing fifteen hundred, if I'm not mistaken, uh, or fourteen hundred anyway. So significantly lighter and uh, just very very agile on the track. I think. Unlike the Maserati, this one probably won't find a lot of favorites. I think the straight line speed uh, deficit is just going to be killer. But uh, maybe if you find a track like a Zolder or something like that, where you know your cornering speed or Mizano, where your cornering speed is so crucial, I can see this being competitive. But generally, if you're, I mean, if you're at Monza, uh, you can probably sit that one out. I would say this thing is not going to be a treat to drive at Monza. Here we go. We got a little bit of a strip slipstream. We're almost keeping up. There we go. We'll sneak around the outside, try and get a cleaner break here into this right hander. And we've done it. We've got the overtake done. And then we've got two KTMs ahead of us. So the strangest one of the pack happens to be good enough to be in my top three. It's a blast to drive and uh, just very different. But if you're looking for something more in line with GT3, this could be it. Okay, just two to go. And from the obscure KTM Crossbow GT2 to the very familiar Audi R8 LMS GT2. Like Mercedes, Audi doesn't take a lot of risks when developing these race cars, that R8 LMS base that they've used for uh, other series as well. It's just tried and true why mess with it so they've stuck with it it has that 5.2 liter naturally aspirated v10 engine mounted behind the driver this is again like other manufacturers marketed by audi as the most powerful customer racing car on offer the horsepower is somewhere around 640 dry weight little over 1300 kilograms so it comes in kind of mid-pack in both those respects uh, the difference that you're probably immediately noticing with the R8 LMS GT2 is that massive snorkel which was not incorporated into uh, the R8 LMS design for other series uh, this car was the 2023 European series winner uh, the number 67 car driven by Henry Hasid and Anthony Beltois in the Pro-Am series took the victory by just one point so this is a championship winning car. Let's drive it. So you can infer from the fact that uh, I'm driving the Audi what number one is, uh, but let's talk first about this Audi. So it is nearly as grippy as the KTM, but not quite. So it does have a little bit more life than that KTM. It's got good straight line speed, except it does fall off. The uh, RPMs really drop going into fifth gear, so it's a little bit tricky. Uh, but for most sections of most tracks, you can do a lot with third and fourth gear. And uh, this car just comes together really, really nicely. It is a great GT2 car. Uh, it, like the Maserati that we're seeing in front of us, it's a great all-around car. Uh, I would say this car is a little bit more... Uh, what's the word I'm searching for? Potent than that Maserati. Can do a little bit more in a straight line, it feels like, even when those revs drop to uh, to uh, fifth gear, going into fifth gear, rather. And it just feels like it has that get up and go that you're seeking from a car like this. Huge, huge power from that V10 engine behind me. And uh, yeah, very, very capable car overall. And again, quite well stuck. So, uh, just... Yeah, really great all-around car. And uh, I kind of figured it would be like this. This is, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know a lot about the uh, GT2 European Championship, but I do believe this is the championship winning car from uh, 2023. I think the KTM was second, if I'm not mistaken. But again, you see that blazing speed there. 270 kilometers an hour. We will certainly break 280 there we go 285 before I have to break so just huge speed in this car and I believe at Paul Ricard this can crack 300 so mega mega car all right we got one more lap here 
So yeah, this would probably be the car, and I'll explain the reasoning for this when I get into number one, which you again, probably guessed by now, but uh, this Audi would probably be the one if I was racing, uh, you know, in an online league, this would probably be the car I choose. It's got a lot of life to it, got good power, very capable on just about any track. And uh, yeah, just the, the, the best all around car, I believe, in this GT2 field. So what on earth could be number one then? Or why do they put that other car at number one? We will certainly get into it. So you can see I'm closing on the cars ahead, even going uphill, just great amounts of power as long as you time your gearing correctly. And uh, I'll maybe shut up in a second. When we go up into fifth gear, you can hear the revs drop and hear the power kind of drop in this thing. It's a very scary feeling because it feels like you're in the wrong gear or something, but take a listen to this. And just pretend that I did not hit the wall there. It's not like that wall has a reputation for taking out cars. Right? <laughs> this lap has gone sideways big time. But uh, anyway, I should have known better <laughs> taking the car that fast. I'm not a fan of Mount Panorama. I know it's mega epic in every way in every sim racer's dream, but I've just never clicked with Mount Panorama, so I make silly mistakes like that. But one thing that is not a silly mistake is this Audi GT2. I think it's fantastic. I think it's huge fun. And again, very, very capable on track. It does just about everything well. So uh, yeah, you can get a lot out of this car. And I'm sure more talented drivers than me, AKA just about everyone in sim racing will have a lot of fun with this one. Okay, so just a few more corners to go, and then we will talk about number one and why it is number one on my list of favorite GT2 cars in ACC. But first, we gotta cross this finish line, get around there, girl. And yeah, it's, it's surprisingly spry, this Audi. Alright, number one. And finally, of course, we have the Porsche 911 GT2 RS Club Sport Evo. It's a cumbersome name, but a great car. This is based, of course, on the non-Evo version of the uh, Race Spec 911 GT2 RS CS. It's the most powerful non-street legal GT customer sports car Porsche offers. So if you take a second to digest those words, that is quite something. So huge performance figures from a performance brand. Uh, the Evo version just just make some aero tweaks here and there and some safety improvements so not a drastic change from the car uh, this uses Porsche's familiar design it's got that six cylinder twin turbo engine at the rear of the car producing up to 700 ish horsepower and a dry weight approaching 1400 kilograms so very familiar not a lot new here but the performance figures are off the charts so let's uh, drive this final car So if I've already told you that the Audi is the car I would choose if I was league racing and is probably the best overall car, why have I put this Porsche at number one? Well, the reason is it is mega, mega fun. And I don't mean to go bad on these GT2s in the introductory video, but I just have this sneaking suspicion that this will be the talk of the sim racing town for the next couple of weeks. And then unfortunately, like the excellent GT4s, may move to the back of people's minds and it might be hard to find a place to race these GT2s online. Now, I hope that is not the case. Of course, I wish Kunos every success with these cars. However, I just have a sneaking suspicion that that is what might happen with these cars. So I am left with potentially a great set of cars that's not going to be used online. So if I am just sort of having fun either hot lapping or racing against AI, I am prioritizing one thing. That is fun. And this car is huge fun. It seems like it took a while either Maybe it was the real world cars, but maybe it was just Kunos kind of finding a way to make these cars drivable. But if you look at the early Porsche Cup car in ACC, it was very awkward to drive and had strange characteristics. And of course, the weight distribution in Porsches is odd and unique. Well, unique in this series anyway. 
but uh, it was just kind of tough to drive and it was a tough car to get along with and then the new Porsche Cup car just blew my mind it was such huge fun and it felt like they had you know finally kind of uh, got things together and made the Porsches fun to drive and I would say with the 9912 Porsche 911 GT3 R maybe I've got that wrong but uh, the newest Porsche GT3 car uh, they also uh, did a great job with that one and made it fun to drive and that same level of fun has been captured here with this GT2 that rear end I don't know if you can see it in the wheel or not but that rear end is moving around all kinds of interesting ways when I corner so it keeps you on your toes big time and uh, you know captures the fun of driving a car with a uh, unique engine layout um, or, or uh, powertrain layout. So uh, again, I am prioritizing fun on my list and this is comfortably the most fun car to drive. The Audi would be my safe choice for sort of best car. If I was ranking the cars from best to worst, this Porsche would not be number one. But in terms of fun, um, this takes the, the top spot for sure. And by the way, deceptively fast in a straight line. This thing can really go. So you see it winding out 210, 220. The car can really go. So don't think it's, you know, something fun and slow. Uh, it is fun and fast, but uh, the fun to me is what's worth mentioning the most about this Porsche because uh, it just can't be topped. So I'm having huge fun with this car. I love it. When, not if, but when we get Nordschleife for a set of Corsa Competizione, do I know when it is, when that is? Nope, sure don't. But, uh, you know, it's been confirmed, so looking forward to it. This is the first car I'm going to take there because I think it's just massive, massive fun. And the fireworks off in the distance seems like a good time to wrap this up. So thank you so much for watching my video. Thank you to Kunos for giving me early access to this. And we'll see you guys next time.